Brazilian Vinny Magalhaes bringing a record of 13 and 7. The 31 year old 6'3, 206, his reach 76 and a half inches. His opponent, the Honey Bear, 28, 6'2, 205, a 76 inch reach. For the official introductions, here is Jazz Securo. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is brought to you by Autoshopper.com, your new and used car showroom. Three rounds in the World Series of Fighting Light Heavyweight Division. And now introducing, on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. His record, nine wins, four defeats, four wins coming by way of knockout. He stands six feet, two inches tall. He weighs 205 and one-half pounds. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, by way of Palmer, Alaska. Introducing, Shake Honey Bear Hughes. And now his opponent on my right, fighting out of the red corner. His record, 13 wins, seven defeats, two wins by knockout, 11 by submission. Standing six feet, three inches tall, weighing 206 pounds. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, presenting Vinny Magalhães. <laughs> Your referee for this contest is Kim Winslow. Light heavyweights going three rounds. Vinny Magalhaes in the blue trunks. The Honey Bear, Jake Hewn in the black trunks. Ooh. And boss, Vinny Magalhaes, he is one of the most well-routed fighters in the World Series of Fighting. And his ground game is out of control. Yep. This guy is one of the best guys grapplers on the planet. So, and that low kick that he threw, the first very first low kick was really good. But that one too, it was a little low, could have hit the inside of the shin, which is gonna hurt him. Snapping him off, Vinny has no problem with that. And for Jake Hune, he's got to find a way to slow him down and score some points. And again, as a lot of folks know, when you're battling someone that's got as good as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as Vinny does, do not get on the ground with this guy. That's the thing, you know, he was talking about it before the fight. It's whatever happens to Joey, <laughs> yeah. I do not want to go to the ground with this guy. Why? He's the best on the ground. Of his 20 fights, 11 of them have been stopped by way of submission. But Jake Hewn is one tough hombre. 9-4 record, 4 KO. He's got a little bit of power in that right hand. And he oh. trains out of Coconut He's Creek for the American top team. It looked like that kick actually brought him off balance a yeah. little bit in his head. I tell all the time to people, even when it's on the defense, they'll go straight through. It's like putting on a helmet and get kicked in the head. It's the same thing as putting your hand, your right hand up, right, and then hopefully you can stop the left kick. Powerful kicks. Yeah. Thank you. Nice there. So yeah. fit. 6'2", 205 pounds, probably walking around at 215. Big overhand right misses for Hune and now into the clinch. And Jake Hune sensing that this might not be the best spot for him. Nope. Anticipating that big left knee coming up from Michael Yais. He needs to go the other way, he needs to go the left way. He can skip out to the left way. Bring your arm up, your left arm up, push it up, push it up, skip your butt out, and then away. That's where it's going right now. If he brings that leg up, take it back the other way. You can actually put him against the fence with that trick. Left arm, push it all the way up, and skip your butt out to the left. Both fighters measuring them. Look at that. Jake Hume tries to get in a quick little right hand punch to the side ahead and gets his hand quickly back to the defense, that left knee of Vinny Magalhaes. You see the size of the legs of Vinny. Yeah, you know there's crazy. some power in there. His kicks, his inside knees, brutal. Oh. You see, now that stomp can do something, maybe. <laughs> oh, great knee to the solar plexus. I love it. To the midsection, at least. Look at this. Jake yeah, Hume quickly knows. gets back to his feet. Yeah, don't want to go there. As big as he is, Vinny Magalhães checked in at 205, 63, but he moves so well for a big man. He does, but but, but Hewn has a lot of power. Yeah, he does. You know, and, and if one of these crazy hands, right now he's not fully committing because he's afraid when he plants his feet he's going to be taken down. But you know, once he gets used to the space and distance and all the stuff, you know, right. the movement, he will start doing that. He will start throwing bombs just like that. 
Minute 30 to go here, round number one. This one's scheduled for three in the light heavyweight division. Vinny Magalhaes in the blue trunks, Jake Hune in the black trunks. Wow. That's some crazy sound coming from these kicks, huh? That is going top shelf. Vinny Magalhaes finding the left side of the head of Jake Hughes. He fakes there and goes low on Vinny. Yeah, he should have kicked it a little higher. Although, you know, in the camp nowadays, it's really working as well. Whenever you think of damaging kicks, you always have to flash back to the years of the WEC with Uriah Faber. Jose Aldo. And Jose Aldo oh. taking the shots to the left knee, which did not turn out well for the California kid. Google oh. Uriah Faber leg <laughs> after Aldo. Just Google that, what I it's, just said. Yeah. Let's see for yourself. And if you're saying, oh, these kicks don't oh, do much, you'll know that, exactly that one snaps off on the left thigh of Jake Hume. You see, and he did a bullet. He put all this power in there. You saw that. Final 10 seconds here. Wow. Much more of WSOF 30 when we return to Las Vegas. Running, fight! Back at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, WSOF 30, Todd Harris, Boss Root, and Joey Varner, Vinny Magalhaes in the blue trunks, Jake Hewn in the black trunks. And for more on Vinny Magalhaes, we check in with Joey Varner. Todd, you would, you, Todd, you'd expect to hear some grappling advice or rep wrestling advice when you're talking to the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion, but his coaches were telling Vinny all striking advice. They said, use your hands to set up the kicks, keep moving, stay long, you can win this fight on your feet. And very interesting that during that stop or during the break, JQ never took a seat and they worked on his left leg with ice bags trying to Get some ice and make sure the swelling doesn't, because he took some serious shots. He did, the, the low kicks that Magalhaes gave him were, were very, very powerful. So and that's why he's hurting there. And you saw him pulling up his shorts, yep. so he, he knows he's, uh, it's a little bit rough there. He's, he's got to kick higher. I will kick just above. Oh, oh mercy. look at that, beautiful. And the way he set it up. First he gave that kick below the knee, and then he acted like he was going to do it again. I love it when fighters do that. JQ checking that time on the kick, but you can see the welt on the left thigh of the Honey Bear, Jake Hume, but some great kicks coming from both fighters here. But his corner, I wanted to say it in the first round, he, he shoot set his kicks up with punches. So when the corner said that, that's perfect uh, game planning right there. Under three and a half to go here in round number two. This oh. is scheduled for three in the light heavyweight division. Jake Hume really just has to figure out how to check up those leg kicks because he's doing well oh. as they come together and both fighters score Upper points there. there. Oh! Man. The Honey Bear going for a spitting back elbow and fist. Oh, oh that's oh, same spot, oh. and he comes right back to it. And you can see the welt starting to form on that left leg of Jake Hume. Yeah, and you can tell Magalhaes knows it. Now he's got to set it up and then kick. Yeah, just like that, but go for the legs. Boss, I think five more low kicks. Jake Hume can do defensively other than checking those kicks. Can he switch to a southpaw stance? Can he get this thing to the ground, which he obviously doesn't want to do with Magalhaes? Yeah, well, he, he, he can try the southpaw stance. But what you have to do against a guy with great low kicks, you have to square your stance up. Really square it up. Let your toes from your left foot point to the left. And then the only thing you need to do is lift your, your, your foot about four inches, five inches in order to block the low kick. Just like that, but he needs a little less high because if you do it less high, he's going to kick that low kick underneath the knee where the right. where the bone is really tough, you know? And if you block like that two or three times, he's, he's, he's going to stop kicking. He's going, he's going to hurt himself. Yep. That's how people break their shins, by blocking like that. So Jake Hune right now knows that he may <coughs> be looking at almost seven minutes more of those kicks right. coming from Vinny Magalhaes, or he can stop this thing if he can find a way to get to the inside and possibly end it with one of his big strikes. Hume's got a little bit of power in there, four KOs. 
on the way to nine victories. Yun's got big power in his hands. The first time I saw him fighting at the World Series of Fighting, I was very impressed with his striking. So he just needs to connect. He needs a clean shot, and that could be big trouble for Vinny. Immediately gets that sprawl going, does Hyun, and he Look gets thrown that. down. So Vinny Magalhaes getting this thing to the ground a little later than we thought he might, but now he's going to go to work. And his knee twisted from Yoon a little bit, right? When he took him down? Yep. Knee bar. Oh, he's going to do? Oh, he's oh, fishing no. for all kinds of stuff. Roll the elbow over, Vinny. Roll your elbow. Roll your elbow. Right elbow over. Right elbow over. Roll There's a nice elbow, elbow attempt there on the bottom One from Hyun. Less than a minute to go here in round two of three. That's the good news for Jake Hyun. But right now, he has to be extremely sharp on his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu defense. He's trying to set something up, probably go for a leg lock. Especially because he won before here with Nibar. I expect him to do that. Guard is open, so he might do it now. Oh, wow. Great job, both these guys. Look at this. Man, great fight. Jake Hune has the composure to look up to the Jumbotron and see exactly the positioning and where he was. He catches a breath, and again, now he's back to that relentless defense. Under 15 seconds to go here in round number two, and it looks like we will see a third and final round. We'll be back with more live on NBCSN. Third and final round here in the light heavyweight division of WSOF 30. The Honey Bear, Jake Hewen, you see on the left side of that left thigh, he really has taken some serious shots there from the kicks, the low kicks of Vidi Magalhães. And now it's Hewen coming out a little on the offensive here early on, trying to turn the table. He has to. And for more on the corner of Jake Hewen, we check in with Joey Varner. All right, Todd, there was a sense of urgency in the corner for Hewn. They said, if you want it, you got to go out there and take it this round. They said that Vinny's been flinching every time that he throws punches, so they want to see him capitalize on those flinches and land some shots when Vinny covers up. Let's see exactly how that plays out here in the final four minutes and 15 seconds. Jake Hewn looks to be a little more aggressive than he has been oh. in this fight, and Michael Yash reminds him exactly how damaging that right leg of his can be. I was just going to say, I go, really? We don't see anything that's here? Jake does a great job as Vinny grabbed a hold of one leg looking for a single. And this is where Jake Hume feels the most comfortable here, punching, kicking his way to a possible victory. Vinny Magliasso, I don't know if he's stunned or what, but he's really tired. slowing down. He was looking tired. And Yoon is turning it up. And for a fighter mentally, that could be pretty bad. I've been in that situation, actually, and I lost that fight. It was a kickboxing match. You told me you never lost a fight in your entire life. Oh, of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> Every guy did. If you fight everybody. If you pick your opponents, of course, you know, you can, you can cruise through. Big overhand right coming from Jake Hewn. As we approach the final three minutes of this light heavyweight bout, Boss, this has been very close. You could probably make a case for both fighters. Yep. Miguel Yash has probably done a little better job of scoring points, but this could all change in this third and final round. I, I, I truly believe this could be the round of the deciding factor. You know? It is that it, close. Yeah, it is that close. I would say Miguel Yash was uh, won the first two, but if... Uh, Hune is pulling up now, right now, and he's got he's got a lot of time. He's got half a round to do. It's so two and a half minutes. And the Honey Bear looks like Danny someone gave him a can of spinach because he is more the aggressor here in the third and final round. Vinny Magalhaes really struggling to get a spark going here. Now it comes on with a nice little combination. Well, the thing is, he's getting tired. You know, his corner says to him, "Look at that kick to the body. That's going to hurt it." You saw it on his face. So. What the scorer tells him is to go for striking, but striking is not yep. his forte. This is his yep. forte. Here, he won't get tired. On his feet, he probably will get tired. So with two minutes to go in the fight, Vinny Magalhães gets it to the ground, and now Jake Hune has to find a way not only to defend the superior Brazilian jiu-jitsu from Magalhães, but to find a way to score some points. Corner 
JQ telling him you can't stay here. No, he needs to go. Kimura coming up. Fishing for it, fishing Kimura. for it, fishing for it. Yeah, he's going for it. Oh, he's oh, going to do a bad place. Like this is very a bad nice place for JQ. It's very nice what Jake's doing. He's grabbing the inside of his thigh. I think he does. I can't tell from here. But he needs to or grab his shorts, which is a legal thing to do. And he's got to grab it with everything he's got. For Magalhaes, what he needs to do, he needs to push and pull. He needs to suddenly explode forward, break that grip, and then pull it out. Oh, there is no grip because his right hand is out, I see here. So he's holding his shorts. Push and pull. That most of the time works. Jay Kuhn still has that free right hand, and you can see the lock on the arm. Oh, nice escape there. Boy, he steps right over. Very beautifully, very smart. He's going to do it back. Oh! oh. Almost a picture perfect reversal. And now the Honey Bear goes to work. He's got 30 seconds. Vinny Magalhães is in a world of hurt now. And the Honey Bear looks to be chopping down a tree. admiration at the end of an absolute war. Wow. Man. This was nice. We'll have highlights of the official decision when we return to Las Vegas. You're watching WSOF 30 live on NBCSN. Entertaining three rounds in the light heavyweight division. Vinny Magalhães and Jake Hume with the official word. Here is Jazz Securo. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of professional fighting, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges, Marcos Rosales, Roy Silbert, and Glenn Trowbridge, all scored 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision, Vinny 